is the last class of the special seven. And, as you may find out, the subject is something that I never thought would be spoken before a group of this kind. Today, we have a message addressed specifically to those among you, perhaps five of you, perhaps ten, certainly no more. This is the story of your last incarnation. Our hope, of course, is that even those among us who are not ready for the last incarnation may benefit by hearing a message addressed to the higher level of consciousness by spirit. Because ultimately, all of us will be taking this step. Mankind has always been a wanderer. He wanders through time and through space somewhat aimlessly. And the reason is that he is totally unaware of who he is. He does not know what his purpose is on the earth. He does not understand the nature of God nor is he aware of the presence of God. And so he suffers needlessly and continues reaching out, always reaching to grasp something that ultimately appears as nothing more than a mirage. This has been the story of most of us through the centuries. And through all this confusion, this despair, very rarely does man seem to be able to determine what went wrong. What did he do that didn't work and why? What can he do about it? What way of life should he follow? Where should he go? How can he find his fulfillment in this seeming chaos? And however earnest he may seek to find the truth, he's always reaching out with new hopes, trying to attain the fulfillment of new promises, always finding that at the end of the trail, he has not really fulfilled his dreams. And the sad fact that we must all learn to face is that when we continue to do this we are following the path of those who do not know that this world this very world we walk in every day is not the divine creation now most of us here are very fortunate we have followed the spiritual path and we have been exposed to the teachings not only of Jesus Christ but of Joel Goldsmith and if we accept these teachings we also accept that our one goal on earth is to step out of the parenthesis to make a transition out of the mirage called the world into the reality of that ever-present spiritual universe that surrounds us. So you might say that we have found answers. Answers that work. Answers that the entire world has actually been seeking all these centuries. And at this moment, there are those among us who can actually say, yes, I believe this could be my last incarnation. A word of caution, of course. Even when we approach this great moment, we must realize that there are none among us who can make this major step unless we have been ordained by the Spirit, unless we have really caught the vision the great vision of the masters 
unless we truly know deep down inside the nothingness of this world the nothingness of the human ego and unless we understand the methods by which universal mind fools us, deceives us, tempts us into thinking that we are mortal beings. It is for those who have caught the full picture, who are willing to devote their energy, their waking hours, their concentrated effort to attain the priceless privilege of walking in the kingdom of heaven on earth that this class is dedicated to. That is why we call it preparation for your last incarnation. We have learned that this is the fourth world and that our soul is an experience that we attain only in the fifth world and that we must relinquish all that we hold in this world to enter the realm of the soul which is the fifth world on our way to the seventh world which is God realization we have learned too that we do not have to wait to die to find a paradise in heaven for we know that God is here now and so in order to prepare properly for this transition it becomes necessary to recognize certain facts and one is that the entire world we live in is formed and controlled by the universal mind that this universal mind is incessantly projecting a continuous flow of material images false images images that even include our human bodies and that unless we step out of this universal flow of false images we must move directly to our graves and into reincarnation and so this is what we bear in mind as we daily practice a series of spiritual exercises or meditations the purpose of which is to free us from the flow of world illusion to break past karma to deepen our consciousness of reality to open our soul and ultimately to release us from the lies of the world mind this is what we are learning to do and one of the most important meditations we can practice every day in order to do this is to step right out of this world we must set aside a period two minutes three minutes four minutes at least once a day in which we literally walk out of the world now let's see what that means together let's try it let's step out of this world now just let go relax just forget who you are forget all about you forget that personal self and forget everyone that you know rest in the impersonal universe forget the day 
forget the hour forget the place drop all your responsibilities and cares let go of every desire just walk through the world knowing it isn't there If you is not there, if the personal me is gone, you are actually walking in the kingdom of heaven on earth. The world is passing by, but you are in identity. You are standing in self, standing fast in the invisible reality of my kingdom. The imagined movements of the world do not influence you. You are not tempted, not brought back into a material sense of self. And soon we are completely relaxed, free. We feel a gentle presence. No words can describe it. There is an invisible harmony. We feel the very essence of life. Your spirit, the universe, are one. As we walk now in the invisible creation, we are in the true kingdom of God where there is only one law, perfection. We are not dying creatures. We are not flesh and blood. We are not mortal. We are not encumbered by physical bodies. We are pure spirit living under pure divine law. This is the daily liberation from the false life stream. As you surrender to it, to this pure life stream as your human self becomes a nothingness for you the world loses all its power its false forms its false substance and you find the dream of mortality is exposed as a nothingness Past karma fades away. I have found this exercise a necessity at least once a day. Sometimes two, three, four times a day. And as you practice it regularly, it isn't long before you realize that something very wonderful is happening to you. It may be the realization that you truly are spiritual being. You are a purified vessel. And as this deepening breaks the false power of universal mind around you, you are taken right out of bondage to the evils of the world out of the illusions of matter out of karma out of this human lifespan out of the successive reincarnations back into the flesh out of birth and out of death 
out of the world that is but a passing shadow. Actually, you witness a preview of your own transition. The beginning of the new consciousness which knows the Father aright. Now that's only one meditation. And the more you practice it, the more you realize that you have the capacity to step out of this world and to let the world pass by. It's a glorious feeling, a glorious release, and it opens the soul. Let the world pass by. As this new consciousness develops within you, and you set several periods aside every day, you'll find you actually feel the nothingness of the world. You feel your identity. And as this becomes firmly established, the false powers that had, in some way, threatened you day by day, lose their capacity to make you respond. You truly know, I am walking in the invisible kingdom of heaven on earth now. This is that heaven. That's a liberating exercise, and I hope you begin to do it more frequently. Our next meditation is again a difficult one, even more difficult, but very necessary. Once you've established identity, as spirit. Once you have walked in the invisible kingdom of spirit, right here where the world appears, then you must begin to expand your awareness of your identity. And the purpose of this next meditation is for you to know that you are the invisible self of everyone and everything that you see. Wherever you go, there the invisible self is you. And something extra in this meditation. This meditation is not complete until you, the viewer, and the object you view become one. Now dwell in the silence a moment. You, the viewer, and the object you view must become one. That must become the way you walk through the world, looking at everything, knowing it is not there, it is I. We are one invisible self. The deeper purpose of this meditation is to take you out of duality, or what is called separation. This is an exercise in which you are no longer a person in a physical body, occupying a single spot at a special time, but rather you are now the spirit everywhere. Within yourself, think of a tree. See the tree. Look at it within yourself. Now know the tree is not there. Only your spiritual self is there. See a river. Look at the river. And know the river is not there. Only your spiritual self is there. See a person. Look at that person. But don't be fooled. That person is not there. Only your spiritual self is there. You are the invisible spiritual self of every object, every person, everything, every condition 
that comes into your human experience. It doesn't matter what it is. Only your invisible self is there. And when you know that, then you, the viewer, and the object viewed become one. It doesn't matter where you go over this entire earth, in every tomorrow, no matter how many things you see, no matter how many persons you meet, the only self you will ever find is your invisible spiritual self. Now the human mind cannot understand this. That is why you meditate with it. That is why you meditate with this idea sufficiently to come into an inner awareness that can say, yes, I see there is only one, that one self everywhere I am, and I must meditate upon it so frequently that when I go out into the world, this is the consciousness I carry with me. Then it no longer is an exercise, but a realized state of awareness. And once this truth is established within you, once you can abide in it, once you can depend on it to be the truth, you will find that there is really no limitation to the rewards that flow into your life experience. Because when these false images are overcome by spiritual consciousness, Divine images will take their place. All right, suppose we open our eyes just for a minute because we're going to go right back into another meditation. And I'd like you to see that this new subject for meditation is one that must become a regular part of your inner work. Remember, we're talking to those among you who are preparing for your last incarnation. That means we can leave no stone unturned. We can leave no lie in our consciousness. We must completely move out of every human concept. And this meditation will be about time. This isn't just a meditation for this afternoon. This is a meditation that you must learn to take into your daily consciousness. In fact, all of these are meant for that purpose. You'll spread them out perhaps over a week. You might even take one of these meditations and work with for a whole year. But ultimately, if the subject involved in every meditation opens you up as it will, the new you will be born. Now let's look at time. Not as we have ever looked at it before, but in an entirely new way. You know by now that future time is imaginary. That past time is imaginary. That all time is a myth. And yet mankind thinks that the future comes into the present that tomorrow becomes today now there's no truth in that at all there simply is no future time now many of you have wondered about your past lives what did you do who were you so forth what you have not known is that the life you are living right now is one of your past lives. Your soul is moving 
through your complete past into the seventh heaven. And what you call tomorrow is actually part of your past. But it's that part of your past which you have not yet experienced. When you look in the mirror, you think you're looking at you, your present life, but you're not. You're looking at your past life. We are really reliving our past lives. The so-called future contains only your past. When tomorrow does come, you are going to experience another portion of your past, and so on, until you finally graduate from the false images that universal mind has projected into and through your material senses. So in the same manner, universal mind projects false powers. You remember we used that example of the recording machine several weeks back? If someone points a gun at you, for example, and says, give me your money or I'll kill you, naturally you're frightened. But suppose by chance you were able to get a recording of the person's voice, and five days later you played it back. It wouldn't frighten you then. You'd say, why, that's only a recording. It isn't reality. There's no substance there. There's no power there to kill me. How can a voice kill me? That's how you're going to see your present life someday. You will learn that the entire world of time is already past. It only appears to be happening now, but it isn't. It's a delayed broadcast, a replay. It's a replay of yesterday's words and yesterday's images brought to our so-called human attention now. Remember how we played blind man's buff when we were children? Somebody spun us around, blindfolded us, and spun us some more. And then finally someone shouted, now find me. And so we moved toward the voice. We headed north, we thought. But actually we were going south. We'd been spun around so often that we didn't know one direction from another. That's how man is concerning time. He spun around, turned in the wrong direction. All of us, we've all placed our hopes in the future, haven't we? We say, I hope someday to do this and someday to do that. But there is no future. God, Spirit, is eternal, already completed, already being all that Spirit is. Your complete self is already finished. It has no future. It is the infinite eternal now. So when tomorrow comes, that will not be the future. It will be the past, not the future. It will be the past that comes into our sense of the present. We've been labeling it wrong. All of our human life, we've been reliving our past, thinking that we were progressing into the future. And this is one of the major illusions of mortality. Know this, that everything in the world is past. The world itself is past. All suffering on the earth, though we think it happening now, is actually a happening in the past. All disease, all disasters, even death itself, is only happening in the past. It is simply impossible for you to die. You cannot die for one good reason. You already have died. Your death is in the past. And when tomorrow death finally comes to you or you or you, it won't matter. You will simply be reliving your past. The past illusion of death. All of us on earth today are walking through our past lives on the way to reality. But you never can die. All who die tomorrow 
will experience the delayed replay of the death they experienced in the past. What we have thought of as our present life is actually the karmic flow, the continuous flow of karmic activities, the false life stream, or what you may call the impure life stream. Not a speck of it is true. None of it is you. All of it is made up of impure images. Actually, you might call them dead images, not created by God. Dead images that create an illusory ego that moves through the ups and downs of an illusory mortal lifespan. None of it is you. The beautiful truth is that you are self-complete forever. You can never die, you can never lack, you can never be limited, you can never suffer. The secret of the reality of you lies in the unchanging void spoken of in Genesis. That unchanging void is the ocean of love. The ever-present infinite universe that permeates all time and space and is the source of everything. This void is the essence of your being right now. It contains the fullness of the Godhead. It is yourself and it contains everything that you need. Think about that. Think of this void as the divine sea of consciousness above the realm of human thought. And learn that you can and must cross the thin dividing line between thought and consciousness. That they are not one and the same. That when you cross above thought into consciousness, You are in the realm of reality, in the realm of wholeness, of fullness. And then the power of the Father, the love of the Father, the allness of the Father flows into your daily experience. The problems that we have experienced up to now are actually our separation from this realm of consciousness above thought. The manner in which we are separated from this realm is very subtle. Consider your eyes. They see a tree. And instantaneously, what does your mind say? Your mind says that is a tree. But do you see, actually, the seeing and the thinking are one and the same. And they are simultaneous. You think what you see, you see what you think, or with any other sense you do the same thing. Your nose, it smells a pineapple. And your mind says, that's a pineapple. You see what we're driving at? Thought and sensation are one and the same. You don't really smell, you think. You don't see, you think. You don't feel, you think. Your thoughts, become the echo of your senses, imprisoning you in whatever you see or think or feel. This is your separation from divine consciousness. This is how we are all held in mental bondage in the false life stream of the mind. What was the secret of Jesus Christ, or at least one of them? He always stood consciously in the presence of God. And so, he was fully conscious, not partially. He was out of human thought. He wasn't bound by the senses. He wasn't imprisoned by the invisible thought stream of this world. So he could say, all that the Father hath is mine. We are all self-complete too. But as long as we remain in human thought, In sense beliefs, we can only experience the good and the bad illusions of this world. It is only as we are still, 
still in the sense mind, refusing to honor all human thought, all sense thought, that we are able to rise into that area of consciousness beyond illusion. We stand then in the pure life stream and discover the great secret that never were we mortal, never were we material, never were we born of woman, never were we male or female, never did we live in a physical body. We are now what we always have been and ever will be, pure spirit. And we are ready, ready to shed the last state of manifest illusion. And that is where we rest in confidence. For we know that when we have attained self-control of all sense thought, that our soul automatically controls our visible life. We even can rise above the need for physical demonstrations, above the human habit of judging spiritual progress by material fruitage. We no longer need material evidence. We need no signs. In our spiritual, unseparated self, we are the law unto ourselves, no longer reliving the past no longer hoping for a better future, but instead we are witnessing our own infinite self. We are watching truth externalize as harmony, peace, fulfillment. We are truly preparing for our last incarnation. Again and again, as you continue these meditations, expanding them into more frequent periods during the day, you will open yourself to the inner master. And you will be fed with divine guidance, divine bread, divine qualities, all flowing out from within you, from your own self-complete being. You will discover that your inner master governs you infallibly. In the absence of all human thought, you will live in the infallible universe governed only by perfection. These truths are going to become clearer and clearer to you as time goes by. There will come a time when you find it wise to re-evaluate your goal. You will say that I must take a second look at my activities on this earth. Let's say that you're an artist. Now, no one is saying that you should change your profession. Don't misunderstand. On the contrary, what is being said is that you must take a second look at your art. Look at your skills. Ask yourself, are you using those skills for the ultimate purpose? Re-examine not only your skills, but re-examine your subject matter. Ask yourself if you are fulfilling the divine will. Ask yourself if there are subjects that could be more meaningful in your chosen art. Are you working with the right point of view? And no matter what endeavor you may be in, whether it's art or business or some other profession. Reevaluate it. Take a long look at it. Find out if you are handling your endeavor the spiritual way. And then if you are not, give your inner master a chance to reveal to you possibilities undreamed of, new viewpoints, new ideas and let them all emanate from your inner divine consciousness. Quite a number of people have learned to do that. And if you do this with sincerity, you will discover too 
that when you let the fourth dimension enter the third you are awakened to a completely new depth of self you may even find your entire life work being brought into a new focus so give it a try let spirit fulfill your daily work a good rule to remember is that you unfold toward whatever you accept another way to say it might be that if you accept truth that is what you will manifest in your life if you accept the lie of this world that is what you will manifest and so if your thought emanates not from this world but from the divine life stream or divine consciousness you will not externalize the impurities of this world and your preparation for the last incarnation will reach a new pinnacle now these are but some of the exercises that we have found very necessary in our daily work some of them may be more important to you than others and this will vary depending on where you are and who you are study this tape carefully make it a point to hear all that is spoken put it in practice and I can assure you for you the last incarnation will not be a myth but a fact we'll pause a moment now now let us look at Isaiah 26 verses 19 to 21 this happens at the time of the crucifixion and if you remember the, there's an earthquake uh, look at it in verses 19 thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise Christ speaks to us and tells us that just as my body can never die neither can your body ever die thy dead men shall live the assurance that what we have thought was death is but the death of an image not the death of a self and translated into other words it means that there is an end of incarnation a time when in the realization of your perfect self you have transcended the wheel of incarnation thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise overlooked by the churches by science by the world because they have all placed this as an event that might occur after death in a place called paradise or heaven but it means it is an event that occurs which takes the place of death and actually occurs before the death appears the stepping out of the false sense of self is definitely not only a possibility but it's as strong a teaching as the commandments themselves it is the very purpose of the Christ teaching and so it follows 
awake and sing ye that dwell in dust why that's us living in the dust of the earth a body of atoms the mist the make believe life awake get out of that body of dust for thy dew is as the dew of herbs see the dew of herbs things that grow and the earth shall cast out the dead the dead human race dead to Christ is being awakened awakened to know I am life itself I am the life the resurrection and so the earth casts out the dead meaning the dead awakened to Christ we awaken to self-realization and then although we appear here in the fourth plane the soul is opened in the fifth we receive of it and it in turn receives from the sixth and the seventh planes and we are fed by the one mind is no longer the master mind does not run us mind does not respond to universal mind instead mind responds to soul soul responds to the infinite we are one with the infinite we have the realization of oneness awake and sing realize the oneness ye who dwell in the dust come my people enter into thy chambers shut thy doors abide hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed the words fairly shout at us in their beautiful simplicity which has been overlooked through the centuries come my people come you people of heaven you living spirits enter into thy chambers get out of that mind enter into the reality enter into your soul that's your chamber shut thy doors about thee what are your doors oh you know what they are those five sense doors that permit the world to enter with its lies shut thy doors do not honor the evidence of your senses hide thyself as it were for a little moment hidden from the world detached from the senses not subservient to the world mind or even to the human mind until the indignation is overpassed the indignation is this human sense of life that word ind indignation covers many many words part of it is humiliation part of it is frustration part of it is confusion and chaos until the falsity of human existence is overpassed for behold the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity and we know what punishment means it's the law of karma that every moment that you violate a divine truth something must happen to bring that to your attention and the world has interpreted this as punishment it's actually the law of love calling to your attention that you are deviating from reality from truth you are walking out of the sun into the shade and the law of karma tells you that however painful it may be it must be done so that you turn and walk back into the light the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain whoever has caught the light 
the wisdom, the truth, the inner self, is among those whom the earth shall no more cover her slain. Now this is the word of God through Isaiah. Matthew covers it another way. Matthew 27, verses 52 and 53. This is where we're really talking about the crucifixion and the resurrection and the earthquake. And it says this at the time of the resurrection. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now as a literal reader of the Bible religion has thought that saints got out of their graves and walked and it doesn't mean that at all. That's why it hasn't done us any good to read this passage up to now. What is meant for us is that the bodies of saints which slept arose and came out of the graves is the understanding on the earth that the illusion of mortality has been exposed and swept away. Saints coming out of their graves is the new consciousness that mortality is a total myth. When you reach this realization with assurance, unwavering confidence, total knowledge, then in you the saints are stepping out of their graves and came out of their graves after his resurrection. When Christ in you is risen, the saint in you comes out of its grave and goes into the holy city, meaning you're in fourth dimensional consciousness city that lieth four square you're in Christ consciousness the new Jerusalem the holy city now John has something very interesting to tell us along these lines John 5 the 28th verse and the 29th Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. We who have been listening within, learning truth, meditating, contemplating, abiding as best we know how, we who are being lifted out of the grave of mortality should not marvel at the new knowledge that is coming into consciousness because the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. That word voice means more than just his message, his omniscience it also means the soundless sound of spirit as it guides you teaches you leads you lifts you up opens many mansions for you goes before you to prepare a way that living voice within you is that soundless sound when you have found your inner master And that voice, that inner master, shows you how to step out of the tomb of a false sense of body, a false sense of life, 
the false concepts that we entertain about the world completely. And then John goes on to say in the 29th verse, not only shall they that are in the graves hear his voice, they shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And so we have here two types of resurrection. The resurrection of life and the resurrection of damnation. And now we know what they mean. To do good is to live in Christ and to do evil is not to live in Christ. It's either Christ or perish. It's either Christ or new karma. And so we're being told very positively by the Christ that there is a resurrection from the dead on this earth, an awakening. And those who live in Christ's consciousness, who live in the awareness that this is a spiritual universe, are doing good, spiritual good, divine good. They're letting the word of the Father, the voice, guide them. And so they do good automatically, because the Father within doeth good. And they are led into the first resurrection. And those who have not found the inner master, who are not following that inner master, who are not being guided by the Spirit, literally, cannot do good because the will of the Father is not in a man. The will of the Father is in Christ. And so they doing evil, meaning not following Christ, they walk unto the resurrection of damnation, meaning they must reincarnate. We've got to come back because it's essential to walk in Christ, to walk into heaven here and now. So we have our mandates very clear from the Bible. There are some other passages that are important for us to look at right now. And there's a, a terminology in what you're about to hear that some of you may not like. I don't either. But the words are in the Bible and they are important and they do have a point. So we'll have to look at them and glean their message. I'm referring now to 2 Peter 22. And in 2 Peter 22 we have the following phrase. Second epistle. The 22nd verse. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his own vomit and the sow the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire now you heard of the two resurrections the ones who go unto the resurrection of damnation and this is telling you what that means when the dog turns to his own vomit that means reincarnation but it means more than that. It means that what we are looking at is not the present. It's the past. That's why we return to our own vomit. We come back to the past. We come back to that which we've already digested. We spew it out. It's redigested. You see the ugliness but the truth of what it is telling us you relive your karmic past your mortal past you go back again and again reliving the past not knowing you're doing it and the stream of karmic debts is something we're constantly paying because we don't know how to wipe it clean like the sow the sow washed to her wallowing in the mire 
We can't get out of the karmic filth. And the proverb that he's quoting is the 26th proverb, the 11th verse. Now, why does he tell us that? Because mankind is grooved on a treadmill of reincarnating cycles. But when you have found the inner master and are lifted out of the tomb of mortality, you break that wheel. You break that karma. You don't return to your karmic past, like the dog, to his vomit. So pardon the terminology, but learn the truth that it is teaching us because too many centuries have gone by and men have turned away from these truths. Now there's more along the same subject, which I'll skip, and we'll go on to another very important statement in Ecclesiastes. This is by Solomon. And I'd like you to look at the first chapter of Ecclesiastes, verses 9 to 11. And I think Solomon wraps it all up for us. Here we are. Ecclesiastes 1, 9 to 11. Listen carefully. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. That which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Let's look at this materially for a moment. The thing that hath been is that which shall be. You see, materially, we're just running that cycle, repeating, repeating. The thing that hath been is that which shall be. The karma comes into our present. We think our future has come into the present, but it's only our past karma coming into the present. Something we've already done again and again and again becomes the present, and we think the future has come into the present. The thing that has been is that which shall be. Every tomorrow is a repetition of every yesterday in a new disguise. And that which is done is that which shall be done. You see how the future is already done and what we're doing is that which is going to be done again and again that which is done is that which shall be done. Why? Because what we had thought shall be done in the future is not the future, it's the past. And so what we're doing now is always staying confined within the prison of yesterday. There is no new thing under the sun. Now we could give a spiritual interpretation of that, but we'll go on to another chapter where we finally get it all tied up. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. The 14th and the 15th verse. And let's look at it now spiritually because it's pretty much what he said in the first chapter with another twist. 3, 14 and 15. I know that whatsoever God doeth it shall be forever. Ah, now let's look at it this way. There is an eternal essence, a foreverness. There is the divine consciousness which is unchanging. There is the unchanging void that permeates all that we see. There is heaven now. Whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. In other words, eternal reality is here. Can't go away. It's going to be the same tomorrow as today. That tomorrow and the many tomorrows already exist in this 
which God doeth forever. This eternal is always here. And if you walk through a million tomorrows, you'll find no more of it as a reality than is here right now. So if self-discovery were made now, you'd have the all of it that people are trying to find in their tomorrows. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. And the fear we know is the love. The love of the perfection of God is called the fear in the Bible. So that when you are worshipping reality, truth, that is called fearing God. It has nothing to do with fearing punishment. It's the awareness of reality. And now listen to this. That which hath been is now. You see, it was always the eternal now, even in all of the yesterdays, the eternal now was there. And that eternal now is here now. That which hath been is now. And that which is to be tomorrow, what we call tomorrow, hath already been. Eternity has already been. It has never been less. And God requireth that which is past. That eternity which has ever been and which is now and which will be tomorrow God requireth that which is past God requireth that we walk in the reality of the eternal now the time picture must be overcome now you remember that I have emphasize that you should have this tape or beg, borrow, or steal but in some way get to hear it study it carefully and the reason is this we're talking about your last incarnation and it's not a high school course your last incarnation is not going to come about by reading about it or even hearing about it in this class it's going to come about it about by hard work and the exercises outlined in today's class are hard work but I can assure you that without them we go to the resurrection of damnation and I don't mean to mean uh, to, to, to imply that only these exercises will take you but I do mean that you must have mastered these exercises to receive further instruction. The voice, the sound of sound within cannot come to you unless you're in the soul realm. And so listen carefully to those instructions once more. You must step out of this world daily. And when you don't, you'll know it. It'll be like being hit on the head. You must step out of the world and let the world go by. You must get that awareness. Yes, I feel the more world moving by, but it's only taking the images with it. There's something that I am that is not moving with that world. I am that eternal now standing still. And I am beholding the salvation of reality. Now make that an exercise. And remember, unless you feel it, you don't have it. So you must do it and do it and do it many, many days before you finally get to feel it. Actually know the world is moving by in time, but I am standing in the permanent eternal I. And that's who I am. Now, when you have your identity, to some degree, you will see the importance of the second exercise, and that is to recognize that wherever I look only I am there naturally the senses are going to be caught up in the personal me but you've got to transcend the senses and not be caught up in the personal me and that's resting 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 until you can feel the self of you everywhere 
as one self. Not a divided self here and another self there and selves all over, but one homogenized self. And you remember, part of that exercise is that the meditator and the object of the meditation become one. So that you actually know the tree isn't there, I am. The river isn't there, I am. The person isn't there, I am. Whatever appears there isn't there because I am. And this might not be too important an exercise to those of you who aren't ready for your last incarnation. But if you are, and even if you're not, someday each of us must tread this path. Whatever you learn now, even if this is not your last incarnation, whatever you learn now, you will find useful in your pathway to the first resurrection. The third exercise was a very difficult one. You're going to wonder, how do I apply it? Well, remember, it's telling you that you're living your karmic past and this is not a life of yours that is progressing at all. This isn't your life. This is only the life of a false image. And so don't waste your time trying to make your life a better life or improve it in any way. But rather seek ye first the kingdom. Turn away from the false sense of life and enter. Enter your chamber. Don't do what that dog is doing in to Peter or the sow don't return again and again and again to the life that isn't now you can see that this is going to be an extremely difficult exercise but it's better to know about it and to know that it is required if you are to walk in heaven here and now so get out your tape frequently or your notes or whatever you have on the subject and again and again go back to this third exercise it's going to increase in importance now for a while you'll seem turned around and can't quite put the pieces together but it will suddenly take effect suddenly the wood will spark and the spark will take fire and you'll understand that I am not in the form, I am not in the human life stream, I am immortal self now. And then you come to your fourth exercise, which is, I am self-complete now. You see, if you're not complete, who are you? You're that false mortal self. The Christ is complete, and if you're not the Christ, you're nothing. And being complete, you never go outside, it's all inside. You rest in the word. You're fed divine bread. I, in the midst of the am mighty. I am the resurrection. I open the eyes and the ears. I am the way. Who is this I? yourself the self of you that is not returning in body after body after body the self of you that is eternal that is now that always has been that always will be and you must find that self you must live in that self consciously you must practice living in the presence of your self above the sense stream the false impure life stream as a purified vessel fully conscious, living in the presence of God. Now, isn't that what the kingdom of God within you means? Isn't that the meaning of releasing the imprisoned splendor? Isn't that the meaning of the new fruitage, the hidden manna? As we start doing this faithfully, we're serving spirit. We're not creating new karma. We rest from the physical plane. 
we meditate until we can identify with everything we see as my invisible self until we hear the sound of sound the voice of God the direct word then we graduate to living spiritual deeds in which through us spirit expresses itself as us and the impure images of this world are replaced spirit replaces the karmic images with divine images thou seest me thou seest the father if we are proceeding along the right path doing the right things then in every part of your day you have your heart in heaven while your feet are on the earth you appear out here in a form fine but your heart your consciousness is always in heaven here now while your feet walk the earth so that you appear to be living in this world but you're living in the invisible world and that is why it seems that you're living between two worlds but while your heart your consciousness is in heaven you are free of the downward drag of matter you're not part of the telecast from universal mind to individual mind you're not reliving your past you're not controlled you're not conditioned you're not in what might be called the negative self or the negative consciousness and you're not using negative energies which work and strive and get nowhere and you're not measuring your progress by material fruitage because that's all transcended you learn that your soul automatically governs your image in this world when you are living with your heart in heaven and this makes the entire world transparent many of us now for the first time in many lifetimes are beginning to walk in our own identity this is actually the first time that's going to increase that's been what this series of classes and all that has preceded has been about that's been where you've been heading for many lifetimes to finally walk this earth in your own identity in the first resurrection which is your last incarnation that's why we reach the point now where we can stop with confidence and say this is the way walking in it it's been a tremendous and a glorious experience for some of us I know it has for me I guess the time has come to say thank you I can tell you this both Betty and I have been privileged beyond words I'm not speaking exactly to a human being now I'm not saying thank you to a physical form we're saying thank you spirit to the spirit of you the spirit of ourself to the spirit for guiding us leading us teaching us opening the way showing us the great Christ meanings so that all of us who have been able to dwell with the word to live in the Christ to expose ourselves more and more to the goldsmith teaching have come a real long way in because there is no separation in spirit we're quite sure that these relationships will continue forever and so let's not say goodbye but let us know that we are one in self to all of you many many thanks we'll see you soon